This is where it all happens. Artwork, cut work, applique, embroidery, you name it. Yolan claims that no two garments that she designs are ever identical. Her forte lies there. Yolan, good to see you in working gear like this. Thank you. What are you working on? I'm working on a kaftan yeah. and I have used the colors from uh, uh, birds like the kingfisher, the peacock and I'll be turning this into a, a kaftan which could be worn with the leggings. I see. Yeah. And actually this takes such a long time, it takes about five days to do this design. Right. First it has to be waxed and we always, you can see, we work only on white material. Mm -hmm. where this is waxed and then it's dyed in black. Then after that we boil the design and then we have to do the painting and I get inspired by nature's beauty, you I know. I heard so. Yeah, yes. so it's so beautiful, you know, I always think of the brighter side of life mm -hmm. and I feel that, I mean, uh, for me, color is very important, especially the peacock, the kingfisher and also you can see now I'm doing uh, the butterfly there right. uh, with various colors, so I get inspired by all the, the na mother nature of her. Yes, I, I, I read somewhere that uh, when you wake up in the morning, you see a formation of clouds and that is inspiration enough for you. Yeah, then I come immediately and I tell my staff, you know, now I saw this beautiful cloud and you have to do this and then I tell them exactly how to do, get all the blues ready, you know, the blue is a, a very sort of a soft uh, uh, peacock blues and all, then they know exactly what to do. Yolan's staff is personally trained by her and she claims that uh, some of the staff members are actually about 20 years old in the company. Yeah. Would you like to say something about that? Yeah, and they are very loyal and faithful because, and they like working here. You know why? Mainly it's not something very pleasant mm -hmm. and also we don't have targets. They take their own full time to do something because that's how their inspiration also comes. And now I have told them how to get color. Sometimes they go and break a leaf and come and get all the greens. That's how I have trained them. And we work like one family, you know. And we, I don't push them hard in the sense now, see how, how they are relaxed and working. That's how we work. And uh, also, you said uh, that to, to make a piece of art, to make mm. an individual piece of art out of a garment, a lifeless thing, at least eight hands should work on that one garment. I know. Yeah, because now actually we have different skilled people. Now these people are doing the batik work mm -hmm. and then I have a dye master. Now he is doing the painting. Mm -hmm. Then we have upstairs the people who do the cutting and now she is doing the freehand drawing. So that means each garment is handled by about 10 people. So it's a very skilled job and also to highlight we have the sequin work, the bead work and all that. Mm -hmm. And actually now this is going to Bahamas. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Okay, the next question, Yolan. Okay. Somewhere down the line, somewhere in the process, all this what you do here goes to the world. Yeah. What are the countries that you export At your US. garments to? Mainly we do a selected lot to Japan and they give their own colors and all that. Now we did a, 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 a kaftan collection to Kuwait, Dubai, uh, then Switzerland and many countries. You cater to a niche market, you said. Uh, you don't uh, take in orders, take in bulk orders and you said it's not humanly possible. Could you explain that? That is because each of these uh, items take at least 10 days, some take 20 days. For instance, now see that black and white sari, mm -hmm. that is rather simple sari. It's just uh, waxed and dyed in uh, grey and black. Mm -hmm. And then also to give it uh, added uh, glamour, I have highlighted it in uh, sequins, in red and the other colours. And now this takes at least 15 to 20 days because this design has to be drawn and waxed and it is then we dye it in green and then we reboil it and each of these shades are being painted so that this takes a longer time than the other one and you can see how we have done the sequins and the beadwork. This one again is something very very special. I did it yesterday and I have done only one of a kind like this. Again, batik and it's all hand painted and you can see the vibrant colors in this. The housewife lazing at home suddenly decides to convert her hobby into a business. And today her annual income tops 30 million Sri Lankan rupees. When we come back, more about one of Sri Lanka's top businesswomen. Stay tuned. And being a woman also sometimes when you go to the banks and you want something done, it becomes a problem. How do you 
maintain that signature style. What I want to do is to make a woman look very elegant and sophisticated. So I make that woman look ele elegant by doing something completely new. And also I like bold prints, bold colors and also animal prints which makes a woman look quite different. And also I am doing something completely different where I combine so many techniques to make one garment. So that is also one of my plus points. Um, your ability in, in making a simple piece of cloth, uh, uh, an individual work of art, you mix, mix and match a lot of techniques, applique, uh, artwork, print, uh, screen printing. Please uh, share that with us as well. I do a lot of techniques because I have learned the art of all over the world. Like in Japan, I uh, did screen printing. In Barcelona, I did another kind of uh, tie and dye. So I combine everything and make my own uh, clothes and my own style, which is something very unique and no one else has it. I think even if you go right around the world, they will identify my Yolan collection label anywhere. Okay. Uh, Disadvantages and advantages of being a businesswoman in Sri Lanka. Disadvantage is mainly that the whole responsibility is yours, especially finding the finances and uh, getting everything organized, getting the building, going in for loans, all that is a headache. But at the same time, there is a big advantage in being your own boss because you can come to work at any time, you can do things that you uh, like especially you can combine work and pleasure together so that's a great advantage and being a woman also sometimes when you go to the banks and you want something done it becomes a problem ah she's a woman i don't think she's capable enough to handle it but i have overcome that and now i can manage handling everything also going abroad and when you travel alone also you have so many disadvantages you know uh, doing our own stall alone, all that counts. And uh, when we when we were talking before before the filming, you said uh, actually it's a very good tip for aspiring entrepreneurs. You said you 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 can't say yes to everything. What did you mean by that? What I said was when you start a business, especially at the start, you have to be very very careful and don't think of the money aspect of it. You first try to. Uh, make the client happy that is very very important when I studied actually the way they said was your customer you have to treat her or him as a king or a queen so that is very important and also once I got a very big order for about thousand pieces of batik uh, clothing and at once I refused I got a shock then he said okay my gosh you are getting so much of money and why can't you execute the order I said no way because I don't want to execute the order and spoil my name you know money is not everything the moment you try to be too too greedy and uh, go for big um, uh, ventures then automatically what you have built it crashes and I don't think you can maintain that space so for me I would prefer to do 20 30 garments well done rather than taking this very big order. Yolanda Dalvihari believes that every woman is blessed with talent that should be cherished and made use of. And her life policy is to share her wealth with the less fortunate. Until we meet again next week with another episode of All About Success, good night. That's it. When he lost, what was your first reaction? What, what, what did you feel? It was a big blow for both of us. I think Anrudh the waited a bit too long mm -hmm. to start the fight. We lost the fight. But the most important thing was, uh, it was a big blow for both of us. Because actually, people crucified me, not Anrudh. In one of your media interviews some time ago, you said you were continuously falling in love and uh, you were attracted to women and you flirted outrageously and then you said you met Dehara, your wife, and you changed. But do you think you ha still have your old traits in yourself? Uh, I think I still flirt around. I still admire beautiful women. <laughs> <laughs>